All right. So today we get an investigation four one and four two scatter plot. And uh, where did I put my notes? Here? Okay, and also line is best fit. Okay, tomorrow we'll get into 4.3 and 4.4, we finish up investigation for. So, a scatter plot has points that show the relationship between two sets of data. Give you a second to write that down. Has points that show the relationship between two sets of data. So the graph to the right here shows the relationship between weight and height. That's two sets of data. Okay? So don't think of constant rate of change. Don't think of the inverse stuff. Okay? It's not the same thing. These, these don't make really a line. They're just points that are scattered across the graph. Scattered plot. Okay? So if we were to describe the relationship between the two variables, look at the weight, right? As weight is increasing, what do you notice about the height? Yeah, it's kind of increasing, right? If you notice that it's kind of looking like it's going this direction, it's just not a line, right? Yeah. So we could say as weight increases, height increases. Pretty simple, right? So these types of graphs, if you see here, the points kind of going in this direction. I'll tell you, we'll kind of talk about it more in a minute, but we call that a positive correlation because it looks like it's kind of had a line of a positive slope, right? If we do something on a negative correlation, let me show you. Don't forget to draw this, by the way, but I'm just kind of giving you a visual. So you kind of see the line kind of looking like it's got a negative slope? Okay. We call it a neg negative correlation. And then we also have something called no correlation where you kind of got points kind of all over the place that really don't show any kind of pattern. Okay? So those are the three different types. Positive, negative, and no correlation. Positive, negative, and no correlation. Three types of graphs that you can have. So we would say that this graph where height and weight would be a positive correlation because it's kind of going up. Both both of them are increasing at the same time. We're getting into each of the three here in just a second. All right? Is everybody with me? Okay. So let's go to the first one. Positive correlation. The relationship between two variables in which they both increase. So as the x values increase, the y values increase. Um, so thinking of a, a real world problem that time, we're, we're both increased. Um, height and weight was one, right? Okay, as height increase, uh, height increase, weight increase, and vice versa, right? Here's another one where they're both increasing. How about um, time studying in hours um, and scores on a test, right? Wouldn't that both be increasing? If you study longer, you tend to score better, right? Pretty simple. 
Okay, so there's lots of examples out there where the bowl's increasing. Don't, be, don't get in your head about constant rate of change and those kind of things. Just think about two variables that could be both increasing at the same time. Okay. But down below here, you see two graphs. Okay. Both are positive, right? They're both kind of going off in this direction, right? So if you look at the first one, okay, we can also call these graphs strong or weak. Okay. Strong or weak depending on how tight the points are. So these points that are really, really tight together, we would call that a strong correlation. Okay? Because the points are so close together, it kind of looks like a line, right? The weak is the next one. The points still kind of show that increasing <coughs> line. They're just a little bit more spread apart. They're not all tightened up together. All right? So that's the difference here between strong and weak. So we'll write that down here. So. So for strong, points are closer together. Kind of think about that as like they're, they look close to a straight line. Okay, and then weak. The points still show that they're increasing, but they are more spread apart. And that's the difference between the two. Strong and weak. So negative can also be strong weak. The points would just be going the other direction. Okay, so strong points really close together. Weak still be able to see that relationship. But they're spread apart. All right. Everybody with me? Yes. Okay. Yes. So let's go to negative correlation. So a negative correlation is a relationship between two variables where one of the variables increases while the other variable decreases. So it kind of has a little something in common with inverse, right? Because didn't inverse both do that? Right? That's how you got that curve. As one variable increases, the other one decreases. So as our x values increase, our y values decrease. So think about this as the, uh, this is kind of a, a good one we've used in the past for real world problems with uh, negative correlation. Think of, um, time in oven is turned off versus temperature. Right? So if you turn, if you bake something, right, it takes some time for the oven to get to whatever temperature you want, right? When you turn it off, does the oven cool off just like that? No. 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 It takes some time. That temperature decreases as the minutes increase, right? But it takes time for that oven to cool off. So that's kind of an example of that, right? So as your time increases, your temperature would decrease, okay? And again, there's other examples. Take this one. So here's an example of... Two negative correlation graphs. And that first one, is that strong or weak? Weak, right, because the graphs are a little bit spread apart, right? Yeah. Even though you can still see it going this way a little bit, the points are not close together. What about the other one? Strong. Yeah, that's strong, because those points are really nice and tight together. Now again, they're, they're not, you never have points where they're so close together they make a straight line, because that's not a scatter plot anymore. That's the linear model. Okay, but that's, they're going to get pretty close like that. Okay. So again, in terms of the difference of strong and weak, well, it's the same thing, right? So for strong, points are close together. We're in a weak negative, 
Okay, it still shows a decrease. But points are a little bit more spread apart. So kind of worded like the other one is. Kind of worded like the other one is. You can just, uh, obviously the other one had an increase, right? You just change the word. All right. The other, the third one is no correlation. Okay. So when we have no correlation, there is no way to determine or of determining from these points that the pattern is increasing or decreasing. Okay. You can't look at this graph and tell me which way it's going, right? Mm -hmm. These points are literally all over the place. So when you compare real life examples of this data, you got to compare stuff that has no correlation. Like for example, eye color and test scores. These are two variables that have absolutely no correlation. It, your test scores don't depend on what color your eyes are. It has no bearing whatsoever. Um, height to intelligence. Your height has no bearing on how smart you are. Those are things they have exact, no bearing on the other one. They're just two completely separate events. That's something that would kind of qualify as no correlation. Okay. Or the other kind of stuff did, right? You can kind of see those examples. All right. So I want you to take a couple minutes as a group, and I want you to go through these three graphs. Tell me what kind of correlation it is. And then also, looking at where the axes are, or what's written on the axes, the label, what it means to the relationship there. Okay, the same meaning, okay? So look at, think about what these axes mean to the story, or what's being shown here, and kind of see what goes there. So I'm going to pause this video for a minute. All right. So for A, what kind of correlation did you say this has? Caesar? Positive. Positive. Would you say strong or weak? No, weak? Yeah, it's weak. It's still showing the positive, right? But the points are a little spread apart. All right, so what did this mean to the relationship of the two variables? What would you say? Deal? Uh, more practice, more hours of practicing, or just you can get it. Right, so as time practicing increases, Right, your uh, hits during a game increase, right? Or chance of hits during a game. And that makes sense, right? The more you practice, the better you get. And that's in anything. Not just baseball in this sense. Okay. All right, what about the middle one? Would you say positive, negative, or no correlation? It is negative. It would be a strong, right? Those points are pretty close together. And they're almost a straight line. So what do you say for the relationship for this one? What would this what does uh what does it in, what does this mean? Let's talk about the how the axes are labeled. Jamie. Yeah, as years uh, since the relief increases, the copies sold decrease. And that's with anything, not just books, right? Movies. If a movie's been out a while, less people go see it, right, than when it first comes out. I've never heard of anyone going to buy a book twice, the same book twice, just reread it. Right. All right. Good. What about the last one? What do you call it? What do you say for this one? No. No, no, no correlation. Now, when you talk about this, okay, you would say that the test at home and the math term grade um, have no relationship.
I have no relation. That basically means there is no correlation between you have a pet at home and what grade you get in your math class for that term. Okay. Again, two variables that are just completely different. Okay. All right, now, the next one down here, we're going to make a scatter plot. So, which one depends upon the other? Does homework grade depend upon your test grade, or does your test grade depend upon your homework grade? Test depends upon your homework, right? The more homework you do, the better you score in a test, right? So we're going to label homework grades here. And the test grades here. And these are both going by 10, so I think if we go by 10s on each one here, we should be able to fit all of our data in here. Instead of going by 5, for some reason. Put it right in my desk. Alright, and here. Now, this is different than graphing, okay? When you graph, we had to plot some points and connect them to make a straight line, right? In a scatter plot, you are just plotting the points, okay? So we go to our first one, 94, 98. So go over here, go less than halfway, and go all the way up to 98. So about right there. I don't know, I could be off it a little bit, but pretty close, okay? 65, 67. And a little bit more than halfway in the middle, 82, 78, 79, 96, and that other one was 98. We're going by 10s here. Uh, 82, 85, the middle, 75, 73. 2040, ooh, that's a nice easy one. That's right on the grid. 95, 94. And 75, 88. All right. So there's our point. Okay. That's that's makes it making a scatter plot. It's not asking for anything else. But if I were to ask you, looking at that graph, would you say it's positive, negative, or no correlation? Positive, right? You can kind of see it going up in this direction. Okay. Again, just plotting points. There's no drawing lines. You just plot your data. When you plot your data, if it asks you some questions about it, you can kind of make um, a, a general statement about it. Now, we can also use scatter plots to predict things, but we have to do something to be able to do that. And it's called line of best fit. Okay. So remember back when we we had like equations and we had a if you're making an equation of a straight line, that's going to come back right here. Okay, so if we want to, we want they want us to graph this uh, points on the graph and then draw a line to hit as many points as possible. So if I go to graph this, quiz scores and test scores, homework quiz scores. Well, homework quiz scores will go right here. Test scores right here. So the percentages, if we go up by 10, we're good. So we're going to make the scatter plot. Okay. Let me get more screen here so I can see. And then down here, because these are going up by ones and by halves, I'm just going to go up by halves every time. And I should be able to fit all of the data. Okay, so, okay, so at 1, here's 1, 55, we're going to go right in the middle, there's one point, 2, 62, we're just going to dot our points here, 4, 87, 3, 75, that goes right in the middle, 
588. Make that a little bit higher than 87. 270. That's a nice one. 161. So it's just above the line here. Two and a half. 65. Um, 595. That should be right in the middle. 491 and 377, just above this guy. All right, so there's our guy. So what kind of correlation do you think this is right here? Positive, negative, or no? Yeah, it's going up. It's going up. As the homework quiz scores increase, so does the test scores. So we're going to say positive. And we'll say as the homework quiz scores increase, test scores increase. Now, here's where the line of best fit comes into play. So when you hear, let me come back up here just a minute. So, so two, two points that lie in the line, and they're going to pick our two points. And when they say equation of the line, what should go into your head when you hear equation of the line? What should, what should you be thinking about when they say equation of the line? What's the equation of a line? Y equals mx plus b. Okay. Now, who remembers how to find the slope if we're given two points, 155 and 487? Right, subtract the y's and the x's, right? So if we want to use the bigger numbers first, we can start here, that's fine. The so y is 87 minus 55. And then 4 minus 1. Well, what's 87 minus 55? 32. And 4 minus 1 is 3. So if you divide these two, you get like 10, it rounds like 10.7. So here's our slope. What does the slope mean to the scenario up above with homework scores and test scores? Well, that's like saying 10.7 over 1, right? So for every one point, on a homework quiz, test scores increase by 10.7%. Okay. That's the slope. Now we're going to figure out our B in just a minute. But I'm going to go up and draw the point, and I'm going to use these two points here to draw my line through, because that's what they told us to use, right? So if they told us to use these two points to figure out the slope, that's where our line's got to go through. All right, everybody with me? Yeah. All right, I'll come back down in just a second. So I'm going to go up here. So here is, here is 155, and then the other one is 487, right, which is right there. So I'm going to use my straight line tool. I'm going to shrink this for a minute. All right. And I'm going to go right through these two points. And again, line of best fit kind of helps us predict because this is not a linear model. The line is linear, but all these points don't go on the line, so it's not linear. So there it is. It goes through two points. And you can kind of see it cuts the data in half. There's five points below the line, two on the line, and four above. You're not going to get it exact because it's got an odd number of points, number one. You're just going to do it your best. Yeah. All right? So there's our line of best fit. So far, we found the slope to our line. What else do we have to find to be able to make an equation? Seven? Our B, right? Now, how do we find B when this point is not the y-intercept and this point is not the y-intercept? But we had the slope, Amanda. Right. So first of all, we have to use 
y equals mx plus b, right? The formula. We are going to plug the coordinate in, x and y, so you're going to substitute x in here and here, and the slope, because we already have the slope, right? It's right here, in for m, and solve for b. Okay, and solve for b. Now, out of those two coordinates, which two would pro which one would probably be the easiest to use out of the two coordinates up there, mathematically speaking? Okay. Yeah, it's probably the one's a little easier because it's one as opposed to the four and an eighty-seven. All right. So, if we go to the other spot here, everyone with me? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to use the point one fifty-five. And remember, when we have that coordinate, the first part is your x, this is your y, all right? Our slope is 10.7, okay? So solve for b. Well, we got to take y equals mx plus b, and I'm going to plug in x over here, y over here, and my slope right here, all right? So 55 is your y. 10.7 is your slope, and 1 is your x. And what's 10.7 times 1? 10.7. So once we get the math part out of the way, we are left with a one-step equation. See, I told you. I told you guys none of this stuff is going anywhere. We're already reusing our finding the slopes of two points, making our equations, and we're even now back to one-step equations, which we did in the very beginning of the school year. So how can I get B all by itself? Yeah. Right. Ten point seven is positive, right? So to get rid of it, we got to do the opposite, which is subtracting it. Okay. So that's this. So my right side is B because that's zero. Fifty-five minus ten point seven is forty-four point three. All right. So we got our B right here. That's a decimal. Point. So we got our B, we got our M, what's our equation? Y equals 10.7 X, because remember, our M is right here, and our B is right here, we just plug them in, right? But now, now I, I, get, I get all this work to plug in the equation, well now, Questions five and six below here, I can now answer because at least I have something to play. Okay. Oh, what does the y intercept mean to this, this scenario? Well, at 44.3, that tends to be where it's on the axis, right? So if your if your homework quiz is zero, right? Your test score. is 44.3 percent, which is not that great, right? No. No, not way. Now, I can take this equation now and use it. Remember, in this equation, y is your test score. x is your homework quiz score. How do you know that? Because on the front, this is that where we labeled our axes on the other page? So look at it. Go back. This is the x-axis, right? Look what's labeled on our x-axis. Our y-axis is up here. And look what's labeled on our y-axis. That's how we know. Okay? That's how we know. All right. So I can use this equation to help me out. 75% is a test score, right? So I'm going to replace 75 with y. And we're going to solve for x to be able to figure out what they're asking us. So this is a two-step equation. So how do I solve this two-step equation? Tyler? Correct. i got to get rid of everything outside the x, which is this. Right? So again, because you're subtracting or adding opposites, it's always zero. 
75 minus 44.3 is 30.7. Okay, so now I'm down to this. Remember, our goal when we solve an equation is to get the variable all by itself using opposites or inverses. So how can I get the x by itself when it says 10.7x? Divide both sides by 10.7. When I do so, that's 1, leaving me my x. And 30.7 divided by 10.7, it comes out to some decimal. 2.869, and since they're either in whole numbers or tens, we're going to round to the nearest 10, so it's about 2.9. So that would be about your homework score if you got a 75% on the test. Now again, not accurate, but it's about it's a prediction, an estimation. Okay. Now, of course, using also the equation, if we ask, well, if we got a 3.5 on our homework quiz score, what would be our test score? Well, now we just plug that in for x and solve for y. So y equals 10.7 times 3.5 plus 44.3. That's really easy to put in your calculator, right? 10.7 times 3.5, but how about I actually type in the 1, is 37.45, and if I add 44.3 to that, this is what you get. Well, since all of our percents were at the nearest whole number on this chart, right, let's just round that up to about 82%. So you're roughly about 82% test score if your homework quizzes are about 3.5, whatever that means to the situation. Okay, so that's how you can use line of best fit to predict. Okay, and it kind of brings back some old skills that we've learned in previous sections. Okay.